Roger Williams was a highly educated man who held a strong belief in an individual's freedom of worship. He arrived in Massachusetts in 1631. Even by Plymouth standards, Williams was a radical separatist who came to be known as the purest of Puritans. In 1635, Williams was elected minister of a church in Salem, where he found a forum for voicing his ideas. One of his more controversial ideas was that the English should respect the land rights of Native Americans and should pay for any land they took from them. Another belief that Williams held was that religious groups should be supported by voluntary tithes, not taxes, as demanded by the Bay Colony leaders. When Williams went on to claim that magistrates should have no voice in spiritual matters, many felt he went too far. As it would be confusion for the church to censure such matters and acts of such persons as belong not to the church, so it is confusion for the state to punish spiritual offenses, for they are not within the sphere of a civil jurisdiction. Roger Williams, 1644. Williams wanted a complete separation of church and state, asserting that forced religion stinks in God's nostrils. The Church of Salem finally removed him, and the Bay Colony General Court found Williams guilty of disseminating dangerous opinions and banished him from the colony. Fleeing the Massachusetts Bay Colony in 1636, Williams headed southwest, where he settled at Narragansett Bay and established a Baptist church. I was sorely tossed for one fourteen weeks in a bitter winter season, not knowing what bed or bread did mean. God knows that many thousand pounds cannot repay the many temporary losses I have sustained. Williams acquired land from the Narragansett Indian chiefs and named his settlement Providence in thanks to God. Williams was ready to practice what he preached, establishing a government based on the consent of the people, tolerating all religions, and rigidly separating church and state. Williams wasn't the only one whose views challenged the authority of the Bay Colony elders. Anne Hutchinson was one of the more famous dissenters from Massachusetts, she was an articulate, strong-willed woman who challenged Puritan views on salvation. She believed that all one needed to enter heaven was faith and God's saving grace, and that leading a holy life was not a guarantee of salvation. To Puritan and non-Puritan alike, this view rejected the very institutions that God put in place, and implied the equally uncomfortable idea that people could question civil and religious authority. Hutchinson began hosting meetings in her home to review the weekly sermons and discuss the scriptures. These discussions rapidly turned into forms for Hutchinson to assert her interpretation of scripture, specifically the idea that there was no direct relationship between moral conduct and salvation. A large number of colonists came to hear her speak each week. Hutchinson's increasing influence began to worry Governor John Winthrop, who felt she was a threat to the authority of the Puritan leaders. Your course is not to be suffered for. Besides, we find such a course as this to be greatly prejudicial to the state. Besides the occasion that it is to seduce many honest persons that are called to those meetings and your opinions, and your opinions being known to be different from the word of God may seduce many simple souls that resort unto you. John Winthrop, 1637. Hutchinson's subversive gatherings led Winthrop and the Puritan leaders to arrest her and bring her to trial in 1638 for challenging the clergy. The general court quoted the Bible to make their case against Hutchinson, and she responded that she had come by her beliefs through direct revelations from God. The Puritan ministers felt this was blasphemy and banished her from the Bay Colony. Mrs. Hutchinson, the sentence of the court you hear is that you are banished from out of our jurisdiction as being a woman not fit for our society, and are to be imprisoned till the court shall send you away. Hutchinson, her children, and a few followers left Massachusetts for Roger Williams' more tolerant Rhode Island and settled south of Providence. 
After her husband's death in 1643, she moved to New York, where she and all but one of her children were killed by Indians. Governor Winthrop and several leaders from Massachusetts Bay saw this as God's final judgment.